Hi guys, uh, Jen Mayberry here with Createx Colors. Um, today I'm going to show you a little bit about how I painted uh, this Billie Eilish portrait on a t-shirt um, using the Createx Wicked Opaque line. Um, so step one is I have a black t-shirt and I drew it out with a charcoal pencil. So I use um, a General's charcoal pencil, the white. Um, I like this, it's a compressed charcoal, which means that it's a harder, so you can use um, like a chalk, like a board, uh, blackboard chalk, but when you go to hit it with air, it will blow out. So this doesn't uh, blow out with the air. So that's why I prefer these for portraits and stuff. Um, to project it, I used an autograph um, digital projector. Uh, unfortunately, autograph doesn't exist anymore, so you can't buy these, um, but you can get a digital projector um, online and stuff they have they there's plenty of them so um and we are going to so i'll walk you through how i did this i used every color out of the bottle um, unreduced just unmixed except with uh, i did make a flesh color which i will tell you now so um, the opaque flesh I mixed up was specifically for a black shirt. So it's a little bit lighter than I would have used for something like a white shirt um, because I wanted it to have a lighter base so that I could go over it with some of these pure colors to tint it, you know, more green, more orange, whatever. Um, so the most accurate way to mix the paint would be by weight. Um, so if that interests you, I would do... Um, so it's mostly white and pyrrole orange. Um, so it's 18 grams of white, nine grams of pyrrole orange, one gram of the pyrrole green, uh, sorry, the phthalo green, and two grams of the pyrrole red. Um, and so for those that just like to eyeball it, I would do about a third of a, this is a, a third of a two ounce of white, um, and then half of that with the orange, then we're doing just about 40 drops of the pyrrole red and 20 drops of the pyrrole green. Um, so I can, do you want me to hold that up so they can screen shoot it or whatever if they want to, I guess? If someone wants the formula? Sure. <clears throat> Okay, so basically, as long as you get in this ballpark, um, it's fine. Um, so what I did was I started with the background because I wanted to be able to carve into it with these opaques. Um, so I work digitally, um, from a digital image and so I've got, um, my very high tech iPad covered in, uh, FBS tape. Um, and so I... Because I'm right-handed, I'm going to put my reference to the left of me so that I'm not looking over my arm the whole time trying to see my um, reference. And because I use a digital, so I can zoom in and out um, of the uh, the reference so that I can get you know more detail and stuff because even when you project something digitally, you know, um, I'm losing a lot of the detail. So this, although is obviously a sketch of her face and stuff, there's, you know, there's parts here where I can see that, you know, her eye, her eyebrow and stuff is in shadow, which I wasn't getting in the original drawing. So um, we're going to start with the um, daylight, right? Yeah, the daylight blue. Um, so that's what I use for the background. So I'm spraying... I like to run my t-shirt paint at about 80 uh, PSI um, when I'm uh, holding, so when I'm spraying. Um, so it puts me at a resting pressure of about, you know, I don't know, 85, 90 or so. Um, and I know that's, I know there's other airbrush artists that, um, the t-shirt artists that paint a little bit. I'm going to lose all these guns. I'm so afraid they're going to fall. Um, they spray a bit lower and stuff and they do reduce your paint. Um, it's what you like you know if i do reduce paint i reduce the white a lot because um, i find white 
no matter what kind of white I'm using, tends to be a little bit thicker. Um, so I prefer the 4011, um, except when it's super, super hot, I use the 4013. So it just depends, like if I'm painting in like, especially I paint outside a lot, so like 90 plus, um, I will use the 4013 instead. So we're going in with the background. Um, this background on the image is very distracting. Um, I didn't really care for it. The reason I chose blue for this was because um, skin tones are primarily orange. So I wanted something that was a uh, compliment. So the opposite color so that it really, it really pushed her face to the foreground. Um, so I'm just using these uh, like um, horizontal, no, uh, vertical lines. Um, what it does is it takes your eye right to her face. So I'm just gonna go around and cut um, into this with an outline and then um, pull those. Uh, can you see, do I need to turn? Let me see. Let's do this. How's that? Yeah, okay. Um, we have the background on now. So I have the Wicked Jet Black, um, which is uh, like a blue leaning black. Um, I prefer it when I paint on black shirts um, just because it's, I like a blue or black, just personal preference. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to carve um, some of this overspray and stuff. And I have dusted in a bit of the blue onto her. She's wearing like a black sparkly jacket. Um, and in order to pick that out, um, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's, it's like a, you know, like she's got like these black rhinestones on a black surface. So what, how I'm going to solve that is I'm going to use the background color as like an ambient light. Um, so I've dusted in the blue here and that gives me a base that I can go in and carve in with the black. And also I'm going to do some violet, um, on that as well. So in with the black, um, and I'm just doing this here to clean up so that I have a, um, a clean surface to, to start applying this um, really bright green color. So it doesn't start shifting um, like a teal on me. So in here too, what I'm starting to do is, um, so her hair is like half black, half neon green. Um, so I'm gonna start going in and actually darkening the black of the t-shirt um, a bit to give myself something that I can start pulling out um, highlights on. Um, one thing I wanna mention is that when you're painting uh, on any t-shirt, but in black in particular, you, um, you have a tendency to really hit the paint kind of heavy. Um, <clears throat> and what that'll do is it starts to pool and then you get like these spots um, where the paint has been pushed through the t-shirt and then you get like a, almost like a ring around it. Um, so I would make sure you build up your passes um, slowly and evenly because it'll avoid that those spots where then you're gonna have to go in and fix me. It's kind of always there. So it's, it's a bit of a problem to go too heavy. And I'm being pretty loose. Like I'm starting to pick out some of the, she's got like a bun. I'm starting to pick out some of the loose hairs and stuff, but it's just to give it something um, that I can like start to build. She's got like, it's, um, there's a backlight. And so I'm gonna treat that light as like that blue light. So that'll give me the darkness that I can go back in and give the blue, um, which would be like where this like white light in the picture is showing. Um, the roots are real dark. So I'm just gonna, I'm being pretty liberal with it. I'm not really, not really doing any like real detail just yet, but I do want to darken it. Glasses. You know, there's a, a lens sitting inside, so there's going to be a cast shadow on those uh, lenses there.
So what I can do here is there's a seam that was running along her shoulder. So I can go in and carve that in with the uh, black and give it a nice uh, shadow. So what I'm gonna do too is fade in a little bit this black up into this blue so it gives it a real nice fade out effect at the bottom here. Still, I'm, I'm pulling back a bit, but I'm still using very small strokes, very little bit of paint. I'm not hosing it on anywhere. And she's got, yeah, so there's like a, like a uh, lapel, whatever this is. So I'm picking out the kind of line on um, where the light's hitting the back of her jacket. Um, so I'm, I'm drawing another uh, black line along this one and then I'm gonna fade my strokes, but I'm gonna fade them in the same direction as this. And what that does is it gives it a continuity where it doesn't look out of place. There's a bit of haziness. I'm going to clean all that up. Um, oh, these guns. <laughs> I did clean them, but they're dirty on the outside. Clean them. Because like her hair is black and stuff on a black shirt, so I am going to go in with some violets and stuff and really some really dark blue. Um, they're going to read as black hair, but it's going to be like a highlighted black hair. And that's one of the nice things about the opaques is um, over the black, I can go in and carve a bit of that. And um, like it just gives it that subtlety where it's those details and stuff that really start to pull out like the individual strands of hair without it screaming at you. It still reads as black hair, but it reads as like not just a mass of black. Um, so right now I'm giving it something to kind of stand on with this, uh, these passes of black that I'm doing right now. I'm not being too crazy about it because um, when I do her skin tone, it, there's gonna be a lot of overspray. I'm gonna have to do it again anyway, so. All right, moving on to lime green. This is the limelight green, I believe it's called. No, daylight, limelight, yeah. So it's this one here, this really nice neon. Um, this was the color I was most excited about because um, t-shirt painters and stuff like a lime green, someone, I don't do black very often, but every now and then someone will want something on a black shirt and lime, uh, like a neon green is one of the hardest colors that and neon pink to get to show up on a black shirt. So when I saw this, like, that's the reason I picked this image really was I wanted to get into that neon hair. All right, so some neons. Let's see. So 
So I'm paying attention to the way that her hair is like the direction of the strands um, and, you know, mimicking those little strokes to give it that like bouffant, puffy look. So these right now are more directional strokes that kind of tell me the way that her hair is parting, like there's some little parts and stuff in here. And then I'm going to go back in and really like flex it out a bit and uh, fill it in. But again, I'm still not hosing in color. I'm, it's, I'm still keeping it very, very small strokes. All right, so I've got some base green uh, down, which looks a bit of neon yellow, which is fine. Um, we're gonna go back in with some blues and stuff and kind of tint this and pull um, some strands out, but I'm gonna finish um, the like lower tendrils of hair. Um, and then I'm gonna move into um, some of the blues in here and show you how, to, how I layered uh, the color on this. Um, Never mind, it's never easy. She's got some like, uh, green being highlighted here. So I'm gonna go, I'm just going right over this blue, just kind of hammering it a bit. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm hitting the, the stroke and then I'm using the air to dry it and then I'm going over it um, again and again. I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not firing it in super thick. I'm letting it build up that way. So I'm gonna hit some of these areas here. If I kind of relax my eyes a bit, I can see that there's brighter areas here, here, and in the back and along her part here. So I'm gonna hit those again, um, some more of this green, and then I'm gonna start into the blue and start shifting them.
Okay, so I'm gonna use the phthalo blue, which is a bit of a darker blue. Um, this guy here, this one. Um, and I'm gonna start just real, real lightly going in here because there's areas here where it's a bit more like of a vibrant green. So this is gonna shift that towards like that like money green color. Oh, I really thought I cleaned these well, but it turns out I didn't. Okay. All right, um, so next we are gonna hit the hair with a bit of this colder yellow, this bismuth van vanadit yellow. Uh, the colder meaning that it leans more towards a green rather than uh, yeah, an orange, um, which is gonna highlight these um, areas here where the light's hitting her hair. So I'm just gonna work a little bit smaller and kind of just pull in on top of these darker or the, um, the, the brighter strokes. I'm gonna just pull them even more forward. So and with hair, like you treat hair as clumps. So I'm not thinking about painting individual strands. I'm thinking about painting like areas of highlight and shadow that move in a certain direction. So that's what I'm doing here is it's working in tandem with the blue as it's moving around. It makes her hair look like it's curving around her head or this round object. Um, all right, so we're gonna move on to flesh, and I'm gonna lay down her face, obviously. Um, so with this, because this is a base color, so it's basically, I'm gonna lay down a few passes of this, um, but you know, like you've got areas here where the light is striking, um, her nose, her, her chin, mouth area and stuff um, are all a bit lighter. So I'm gonna hit him with like the cream and stuff like that, and then continue to work kind of back and forth. Um, I don't have a gun on the cream. Wow, we'll have to change that. All right, so in with the base flesh. Also, I'm gonna go up into her hairline and get this like scalp area um, that's showing a bit too. You can see a bit how deceiving it is because this looks pretty dark, but on the, uh, the shirt, it's a lot lighter, so. You know, when you're mixing colors and stuff, a lot of times, you know, even if you're doing, you know, a swatch test and stuff like that, it it's, doesn't necessarily denote how it's going to look on the product, especially when you have a black substrate. It just changes everything. So I'm going to keep my strokes pretty um, small, but I'm going to be back a bit so that I'm not getting a hashy um, kind of mark with it. So it's a real soft, I mean, it's a female skin, so you want it to be um, soft and not uh, full of hard lines. But I'm also not hazing, so I'm not just back just firing it in. I'm, it's very controlled where I'm going, but it's just a softer approach. reducer to this. There's a lot of white in this paint, so I've already hit it with a bit of reducer, about, I'd say about 10% of the 4011, so, you know, I, I fill the paint up to about there, and then I'm, you know, filling it up, like, I guess about my fingernail with, you know, just a, a little bit, um, just to give it some movement in here. And also, honestly, it helps mix the paint up. It's, uh, you know, because there's so much white in it. Or you could add a marble, I guess.
So I'm trying to work a bit overall too. So I'm gonna, you know, make these passes here um, and move around her whole face and neck area and stuff and then continue to work them um, back and forth until I get a, a proper buildup. Um, she's got this weird eyeball. Oh, hang on, I gotta wipe this because my fingerprints are all over and I can't see. I can't see what I'm doing. So it's hard to see, but um, her eye socket is way, way, way cutting into this. It's a real deep, like uh, vermilion color. So, and like, you know, she's got these glasses on her nose. Um, I'm gonna paint just a tiny bit into it so there's continuity. Um, so I'm not worried about this line here because I'm gonna cut back into that with like a purple and a black. Um, so I'm just gonna overpaint that. Just so she doesn't have like a hard line stopping where those glasses are. Um, there is a highlight, but it just, I think it would look weird. I'm gonna make an executive decision. So and obviously, you know, she's got eyebrows and stuff. I'm gonna paint into those a little bit too, so it'll give me something to pull the hairs on top of, give them the definition. I'm not gonna totally paint them out, but I am gonna haze them in a bit so that there's their overspray, um, really, is I'm using the overspray in my favor. I'm paying attention to where there's some light hitting, like her eye, um, her eyelid and like the corners of her eye and stuff she's got like some shimmer on so there's like a real hard bright um highlights there so i'm going to build up some of that paint there now the leg up and i'm going to hit it with like the lighter whites and So uh, one thing I want to point out too is like she's got these glasses on her face and they're casting a shadow along her cheekbone and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reserve this. I am going to put some flesh tone there, but in order to make it look like those glasses are sitting on her face, th that hard shadow where there's a real stark difference between the shadow and where the light is, is actually pretty important. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I pay close attention to that. You know, these, it kind of fades out a bit here. So you've got like some light hitting like the top of her eye socket here and then filtering in through underneath the uh, like arm of the glasses and then it fades around her face. Um, like so, and then right up here next to her nose, it's a highlight and then that just curves. So what happens with shadows is they, they're, you know, they're on a surface. So this is going to curve around her face, around her cheek. So it's a hard, a hard line here. And then as her face curves away from those glasses, that shadow is going to dissipate and get softer. So that's important to pay attention to here because that will really make her face look like it's round and those glasses sitting like they're off of her, the side of her face, but close to her nose. secondary shadow.
So on a couple of things on her nose too, she's got this shadow that's coming in right on the, the bridge of her nose and then on the very end of it. Um, but I'm using my strokes to delineate. So the, the light is going down her nose, but it's spreading over the width of it. So I have a highlight here and then my strokes go back and forth. So what that does is it spreads out the, it shows that the light spreads out and it, and it curves around that surface. Um, so I'm always thinking about the direction of like her face um, or whatever I'm painting, like the hair, you know, I'm trying to move my strokes in a similar direction of the, whatever the surface is moving. So this nose, even though the light is striking down at the nose actually moves this way, it's, it spreads out. So as I'm moving my strokes down, I'm moving them back and forth across it to describe the, the surface of her nose. Um, I'll do the same, you know, with her chin. Her chin is a rounded, it's like a little ball. So I'm going to curve my strokes around their, her, you know, her uh, chin. And then, you know, the lips kind of like are a mountainous. So, you know, those strokes will go down, they'll, they'll curve in and they'll go down again. So in here on the side of her cheek, you know, this actually, this side of her cheek is actually brighter than there's like a shadow casting on her, the side of her nose. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to make this paint, you know, thicker, therefore brighter on that side. So that'll actually give that the nose definition without drawing a hard line. You can go back in it. It's like a purpley color. So I'll go in and shadow it with purple. You know, obviously I've got lines drawn on here, but I'm constantly checking to make sure that I'm on with the reference. You know, this bump, she's got like, she's making like a kind of a weird, like face. So she's got like this, like muscle is flexing right here. So there's a bump that comes out a little bit and I actually had it drawn too high. So um, it's just, it's important to always check um, with your reference and make sure that you're on um, because it's very easy to just follow, like just to follow the lines, but then, you know, I would have painted that too high. I'm gonna keep filling in this, uh, and then I guess we'll come back in a minute once I've got this worked out. So this, although it looks like, you know, these are bright and stuff, there's gonna be multiple passes on this. So I'm gonna um, build this up a bit, and then we'll come back with some more color. And I'll, start, I'll show you how I start to shift the face um, in the different areas um, of color. So we're back and I'm going to add a little bit of 4011 to this cream. Um, so I'm going to show you approximately how much I would add. This, this bottle is full 
up to about like right here. Um, so I'm just gonna one, two, three, four, five. That's it. Um, so that's about, let's say about 10%. So I'm, I'm just letting it kind of flow into the bottle, and that should give me enough uh, flow for this. Um, so this is the cream. This is the off-white color. So we're going to hit uh, some of these highlighted areas. I'm going to reserve the white for when I actually go in with the really bright highlights and stuff um, and just do that last. The cream's pretty close, so it's, it's going to really lighten stuff up. Um, but I'm going to hit, you know, the areas of her forehead. Um, we're going to fill in her eyes as she's not so goth looking and uh, her mouth and stuff. So there's a bit of reflected light from the lip of her mouth um, to the bottom of her nose. So I'm going to hit that a little bit so that I can knock it back with some color in a minute. To give it that brightness that I want. So I am pushing this a bit brighter than I think it should be just because I know that I want to go over it with colors. I want to give them something to stand on. So her eyes are like a real nice, like a green blue color. Because opaque blue on top of black looks different than opaque blue on top of an opaque like white color. Um, and it'll be brighter, which is for her eyes. I mean, that's the focal point of the piece is her eyeballs looking at it, so. So 
Right now, I'm concerned mostly with getting coverage on this. You know, the details like eyelashes, you know, all the striations in her eyes, um, all the hair in her eyebrows and all that stuff is things that I would, I'm going to do dead last um, to really finish the piece out. And with where, like, where is the light striking her eye, where it's the brightest here. Showing up. So her sunglasses have like, you know, highlights and stuff on. Do a bit of those now, um, because when I go back in with the darker colors, make sure you carve into them so that the, this is just a real thin, thin, thin line. It's a little bit. I guess you could call it a cheat if you really wanted to. It's just easier. I'm sure people will comment. People always comment on the tip dry and stuff like that. It's air running over paint. You tip dry is something that, you know, it's it's a reality of airbrushing. It doesn't matter what you're running through the gun. Um, obviously some paints dry more than other. This is a water-based paint with air running over it dries with air. So yeah, it's gonna dry. Um, but you know, it's just I don't I don't find it to be that big of a deal. You know, I mean people will complain about getting into heaven too. It's just, you know, I I just want to move on with my work. So um, people ask all the time about tip dry and stuff, and it's just, it's part of airbrushing. So I'm gonna um, just hit some nice highlights. I'm not gonna do too much jewelry shades on and stuff, because this stuff, I mean, I spent a bit of time um, working all the, the shadows and stuff in the facets of the gems. Like, because I want to talk about the reflected light on here, so I'm going to paint these in a little bit. Although it's reading, for all purpose sake, it's white. Um, is take this, you know, fire in all these um, baguettes and stuff real roughly, and then knock them back a little bit with some, you know, blues, blacks and stuff like that, um, and then go over them again. I mean, you can mix up an opaque gray, but um, this is kind of, this is faster this way, um, in my opinion. I, I like to mix as little colors as possible, especially if I'm, I mean, I've already got all of these, so I'm just gonna use them. Um, without having to stop to mix up the proper color. I can mix it right here on the shirt and keep it. Um, I'm just gonna sketch this in. This like crazy choker. Sparkles on her jacket. So again, all of this detail and stuff I would do kind of last. 
All right, now we're gonna work, I'm gonna start making her look alive because she's kind of looking a little dead right now. Um, so I'm gonna hit this, I'm gonna start with some of this pyro orange um, and kind of liven her up a bit. Um, you know, as light strikes an object, it kind of deadens the color. So where you've got the light hitting her forehead here, the nose and stuff like that, that's gonna be kind of a gray white anyway. Uh, in reality, but as the shadows and stuff as as the you know behind her sunglasses and the in the creases of her eyes and stuff, that's gonna be where a lot of the color is. So we're gonna hit those areas with some orange. Because I paint most of this most of my skin pretty orange. And so she's got like a real um, hard uh, shadow where this uh, the shadow of her hair. Is. They're called, it's called hot shadows. Um, still got that nice color in it. Just, I mean, it's not black. Um, you know, our, our eyes see, our eyes are light receptors. So if you can see it, there is some kind of light there. So I'm gonna represent, even if it's a very low light. God, my fingerprint. I can't see anything with this, this light. I'm gonna be pretty liberal. Um, I want a real even coat. Um, you know, I'm, not, I'm not hosing it on thickly, but I am being a little more misty with it. Uh, I am gonna go over this with that, that flesh again and just kind of do like a push. -up. Shadows in her nose. Got like a sand. Next, I'm going to do this pyro red. Give me that. Ooh, this rack, I, I'm like, it's making me nervous. I have all my guns like lined up on this metal rack, and I'm really terrified they're going to fall off. All right, so we got pyro red. Um, I'm gonna hit the fleshier parts. So as your skin gets thicker, your skin's actually transparent. So it, what you see is like the musculature or like, you know, if it's close to the bone, that's why it kind of leans like, um, like your forehead's a little more yellow than like say like your cheek and nose area. Um, because you know, th these are meatier, there's more muscle here. So there's more, um, it's, it leans redder. Uh, so I'm gonna hit all of her nose and I obviously give her lips start to tint those a bit red. Um, the the uh, fleshy parts inside of her eyes and stuff, that's all gonna. Her lips, I already can tell her lips need to be brighter. That's good. 